Hey, it's Patrick here from the GarageBandGuide.com. GarageBand beginners, this video is for you. Getting to grips with GarageBand on Mac can be a little daunting for newcomers, so in this video I'm going to share my top 5 tips that will help you get started fast. GarageBand will usually open the last project you were working on when you open it, but the first time you open GarageBand on Mac, you'll see the new project window. To get back to the new project window from inside GarageBand itself, hit File in the toolbar at the top of the screen and select New. Now, you have several options available to you here. The new project tab allows you to select the empty project option. This will open a fresh GarageBand project where you can start from scratch. The learn to play and lesson store tabs let you dive into dozens of high quality instruments and artist tutorials. Apple made all of these lessons free recently, so it's definitely worth taking a look at what's on offer here. The recent tab will display the last 10 projects you worked on. The project template folder contains six projects tailor-made to get you started with a particular genre quickly. The amp collection template has multiple audio tracks with GarageBand's amp and pedal board effects preloaded, while the electronic project has several EDM inspired software instrument tracks set up and ready to go. These templates are helpful if you want to dive in and get a taste for what instruments and sounds GarageBand offers, but I would recommend selecting the empty project option found in the new project tab and building your own project from scratch. The details menu at the bottom allows you to edit the settings of your project. To set the project tempo, drag the tempo slider enter a tempo in the tempo field manually, or click the tap tempo button several times to set it. To set the project key, choose a key from the key signature pop-up menu, then click major or minor. To set the project time signature, click the arrows to change the selected number, or double click the time signature and enter a new time signature manually. To set the audio input, choose an input source from the audio input pop-up menu. Now that's for audio tracks only, more on that in a second. And to set the audio output, choose an output device from the audio output pop-up menu. When you're ready to go, hit choose and your brand spanking new GarageBand project will open in all its glory. Once you've selected Empty Project, the GarageBand project window will open and you'll be immediately prompted to create a track. There are four track types to choose from here. Selecting this will create a new software instrument track, allowing you to play and record the huge number of virtual instruments and sounds GarageBand has up its sleeve. This will create a new real instrument track where you can record vocals or an instrument through the built-in microphone or an attached input, like an audio interface or USB microphone, for example. Double-clicking here will open an electric guitar or bass amplifier real instrument track, specifically designed for the recording and production of electric guitars and bass. One of GarageBand's most exciting features, Drummer automatically plays a dynamic drum pattern that you can tweak and mould to fit your project. There are over 30 different drummers available to you that cover genres like rock, EDM, R&B, songwriter and more. If you're ready to dive into GarageBand's massive selection of software instrument sounds, but haven't gotten round to getting yourself a MIDI controller yet, or just don't have one to hand, you can actually use your Mac's keyboard. Click on Window in the toolbar at the top, then select Show Musical Typing. 
On the keyboard that pops up, the middle keys correspond to the white keys on a piano, and the W, E, T, Y, U, O and P keys correspond to the black keys on a piano. You only have a single octave to work with here, but it's definitely usable and allows you to jump into GarageBand's array of virtual instruments right away. GarageBand has a massive library of pre-recorded clips of audio that you can use in your projects called loops. There's a built-in loop browser that you can use to search for your loops using filters like genre types, instruments, and even the key that the loop is in. Click on the loop icon in the top right of GarageBand's screen to open the loop browser up. You can use the loop browser's filtering capabilities to single out a particular instrument or genre. From here, you can choose a category and preview individual loops by simply clicking on them. When you've found a sample that you like, click and drag it across to the other side of the GarageBand window. It's helpfully signposted, drag Apple Loops here. A track will be automatically created for your loop, a software instrument track, real instrument track, or drummer track, depending on the type of loop you've chosen. Drag the loop to the beginning of the track and release the mouse button or trackpad to drop it in place. You can then play the loop by hitting the spacebar. Bonus tip here, you may notice a tick tick noise that plays in time with your track. This is the metronome. It's on by default and it's a good tool for keeping in time, especially when recording instruments without a drum loop or drummer track. You can turn it off by clicking the metronome button at the top of the screen. The very first time that you open GarageBand on Mac, you'll probably notice that a lot of the sounds that you want to work with are greyed out. This is because when you first download GarageBand from the Mac App Store, all you get is the bare bones of the program you need to download the rest of its sound library separately. To start the download, click any of the greyed out items that you see in the loop browser, for example, or you can click on GarageBand in the toolbar, hover over Sound Library and select Download All Available Sounds. Be warned though, this can take a long, long time, so maybe set this up before heading out to work or before going to bed or something. Smart controls, plugins, effects, guitar amplifier sims, recording takes, exporting your project, these are all things that I didn't have time to cover in this video, but fear not. If you're hungry for more GarageBand from Mac Knowledge Bombs, you can download my GarageBand Quick Start Guide absolutely free. If videos are more your thing, I recommend you check out my GarageBand for Beginners playlist right here on YouTube. I'll put links to both of those in the description below. I'd love for you to share the biggest problems, issues or frustrations that you are having or have had while getting to grips with GarageBand. Leave a comment below and let me know. I've been Patrick from thegaragebandguide.com and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.